Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Dokkan Battle video. In this video we are going to take a look at the Dokkan Rush. So I don't, well I never traditionally looked at Dokkan Rush stages but I thought it would be just something a bit more chill that we can do. Take a look at the Dokkan Rush stage, collect the cool stones, send out a reminder to everyone basically uh, and obviously just kind of go through everything. So if you are a new player uh, or if you're a veteran player that's forgotten, Dokkan Rush is basically where they composite a whole bunch of Dokkan events for Dokkan units, stick them into a Dokkan Rush and you basically fight each one consecutively. You can take in support items, you can use support memories. It's not traditionally hard. It, I mean, it can be difficult, especially if you're using um, a team that's maybe you know, a bit subpar. Maybe you've only just managed to complete your first Dokkan event and that was quite challenging for you. Doing Dokkan Rush is obviously not something that's going to be very easy for you. So I can entirely respect that. If you are someone who's played Dokkan for a while, it is highly probable that you don't really have that big an issue doing Dokkan Rush. Um, but it's cool, I'm using a Heroes team just so I can, you know, or I'm using a GT combo, GT Heroes kind of great, you know, great giant ape combo team. Um, personally, yeah, uh, you know, I think, um, I think it's a very chilled way to get stones. Yeah, it's great. 35 stones is a lot. And, you know, for players who haven't done Dokkan Rush, there's like, I think over 300 or 400 stones now in total in the Dokkan Rush. Which is pretty nuts. It's pretty dope. Like, if you if you really think about it, it it's pretty rad um, overall. So, yeah, definitely something that's quite cool. Uh, I think, you know, for me especially, uh, or for me as like a long-term Dokkan player, I always look forward to Dokkan Rush because it's a hell of a lot of stones. And I mean, you kind of, you kind of gotta like, you kind of have to almost enjoy uh, getting those stones. Also, I just think it's fun. Um, it's not anything difficult in content. It's just a lot of fun, really. Um, so for me, yeah, I really, really, really like Dokkan Rush. Um, it's just a really fun game, and I, I'm going to. Yeah, what we're going to basically just enjoy it together uh, is basically what we're going to do here. So it's going to be a bit more of a chill time. I'm not going to like explain teams or anything. This is obviously a battle against, you know, uh, Bardock. Bardock, uh, by the way, probably one of the DFEs that's most divisive. I think um, what Bardock lacks from is having a great pairing partner for himself. Uh, and also, he's just... You know, in theory, he felt like kind of a sane version of Cooler, but it just didn't work out. Like, he gains all these buffs against Extreme and Wicked Bloodline type units and stuff like that, but just doesn't seem to have worked out, you know, maybe as well as, like, we wanted him to work out, I think. But, yeah, for the most part, Cooler, he's a cool guy. Um, <laughs> he's a cool guy. Bardock, he's a cool guy, um, and I think his unit's not that bad. Uh, I really think he is disrespected a lot by the community, but I think, yeah, if you've got a couple dupes in him, you can still find a lot of good use in him, uh, 100%. So we've got here the god uh, Goku. This is, um, I think this is for UI Goku? Yes, I think this is for UI Goku or MUI Goku or Super Saiyan Blue Kai Ken Goku. Can't really remember. Either of those units, pretty cool. Um, they are pretty rad units overall. So, you know, it's always dope uh, to take a look and revisit their Dokkan events uh, and kind of see how the units are. Um, obviously, I think Goku being like one of the signature characters of Dragon Ball Z, if not the main protagonist of Dragon Ball Z, obviously. Uh, means that, you know, for the most part, his units or his events or anything to do with him are always pretty hype. I mean, I'm not the biggest Goku fan, but I think to find anyone that would be like, Goku is not, you know, Goku is not cool as a character. I mean, Goku has some really freaking cool moments, you know, like, let's be real. Goku going Super Saiyan, really rad. Goku going Super Saiyan 3, pretty dope. Uh, 
yeah, I always find it quite funny when people go like, oh, you know, this character, he doesn't, he's not cool, he doesn't have, you know, like a whole bunch of this and this. Yeah, honestly, like, most characters in Dragon Ball Z have had their cool moments. Um, you know, Piccolo's had some really rad moments where he's kind of in the top dog. Like, everyone has their really, really cool moments in Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I think one thing that I will admit has kind of waned off for me from Dragon Ball Z as a series. Um, I haven't read the manga or anything, I've been saving it so that I can enjoy it all in the anime. So I do have like footnotes about what happens, uh, I know who Moro is, kind of, I know he appears. I've avoided the fight scenes, the transformations as best I can. Um, it's literally impossible to almost have no spoilers nowadays in the Twitter era of life. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think you know, one thing that has waned off for me is like, and something I, I do quite like about the, the notion of Dragon Ball Hero or Superhero is that everyone gets their moment to shine. Like, the Tournament of Power just felt like everyone was a byproduct. It was like, Oh, they had Android 17 when it was only because he was just alive at the end. Like, it's not like he distinctly beat anyone. He joined Goku and Frieza, who were both conked out and taking out a conked out Jiren. It's not the most spectacular uh, kind of thing. And yes, they obviously need to have their moments to be successful in their own bracket. I mean, you can't have Tien fighting off, you know, Ultra Instinct Goku just wouldn't make sense. But, like, I think you know, for me, the moments were just done better in the older series. But hey, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, it's not really like, it's not really like a big issue, basically. Uh, this is the Goten and Trunks. So this is for uh, Gotenks. This is the Int Gotenks event, by the way. Uh, Int Gotenks, probably not one of the most slept on units. I think everyone gives him his respect. I think he's, you know, respected as a top tier unit. Um, what I do think though is I think uh, he's still kind of under it. That Gotenks, in Gotenks, was a unit that when he came out was kind of lambasted for not anything to do with his kit, but just because it was Gotenks. Like, people just didn't like the notion that it was Gotenks. And he's weirdly ended up being probably one of the best aging units in Dokkan, like, period. Like, I literally think he's he's one of the, the best aging units in Dokkan. Like, no, no doubt about it. This guy has aged like fine wine. Uh, his defense, even now, is still incredibly good. Um, it's not to levels where you're going to, you know, be able to absolutely withstand every single attack or anything that happens against you, but, yeah, this guy, I mean, he's held up so well. Like, he, he impresses me so much. I, I love Gotenks, and I love units designed like Gotenks. Like, all these units that are... You know, the fun in them is, is not whether they're going to be good. They are good units, but then the RNG can make them, like, like incredible. And that's the thing with Gotenks. It's like he's got all these chances and stuff, and it can be a little bit irritating. But for the most part, he's still good without them. When he gets them, he's insane. When he doesn't get them, he's just good. Uh, SS3 is also a super, do super dope transformation. That's like this big trade-off. You get all this big damage, and then you, you know, you basically get like um, a little bit of a reduction in defense, kind of, because like you can build it back up to being so, so good. But yeah, I, I really like, I really like Gotenks. I think he's super duper awesome. Uh, so yeah, doing his event is pretty rad. Uh, just overall, really, like he, he was cool. Uh, this boo, I think this is for, I think this is obviously for the exchange boo, uh, if I am to be corrected, I think this is for the exchange boo. Also another unit that got a lot of flack when he came out, you know, the whole, people don't like the raw defense with damage reduction. Um, they just hate, they hate the no raw defense and just damage reduction kind of builds. 
Especially when it's not an excessive amount of damage reduction. Like, when you have 90%, everyone's like, ooh, cool. But when you only have like 20, 30, 40%, I think, you know, people can kind of see cracks in your unit. But for me, it, those cracks only really show when you do like no item runs and stuff. I've used this boo to beat uh, LGE GT, uh, the Artificial Life Forms Challenge. I've used it to beat um, the Artificial Life Forms SBR. I've used it to beat the Margin Brew Saga ESBR. I've used this boo to complete so many events and simply because I will actually use an item. Uh, at certain points and when you use damage reduction items units with damage reduction uh, get it additive so if you use a 40% damage reduction item that unit will go from having 40% damage reduction to having 80% damage reduction uh, and in long form events once you get super boo this boo can tank really well because he obviously greatly stacks defense then for three turns and yeah he's just uh, he's just a really cool guy he's a really cool unit uh, like I said, I think people give him a lot of flack and gave him a lot of flack. Uh, but I think with the link leveling update, the power of the margin link set, the regen that he gives, um, you know, especially if you start getting dupes in him. I, I know you can say that about a lot of units. Hey, you know, get this unit to rainbow and he will be like incredible. He'll be the best unit you've ever seen. I think with Boo, uh, that extra defense, especially from the first dupe, goes a long way. Um, Thing. once you get that first dupe you can start to see some really good stuff and i mean he can hit some decent attack stats he's got a lot of heal he's got a lot of utility leader skill is pretty cool as well so yeah i don't know i i think he got a really rough time um and i think people gave him you know a rough time but i actually think he's also a unit that's aged pretty well um i think he's a unit that's aged well i think he's done a lot of good stuff um, I've used him to complete a ton of challenges, so uh, I can't say he's been bad, and I think his league skill is pretty good, so uh, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I like that boo. So yeah, um, I think that boo is really, really cool, and yeah, I think, I think a lot of people gave him a lot of flack. Uh, this event is for the tech Kaolin Khalifa, a unit I think has just faded into obscurity. And they're not even a bad unit, they actually are legitimately a really, really top tier unit, especially for long form events. Um, I think the reason they faded is because the units on either side of them were kind of, I think, you know, they were just before the meta shift increase, like where we started getting units like Super Saiyan 3 Goku or Super Saiyan 2 Goku turning into Super Saiyan 3 Goku. We started getting like all of these you know, kind of crazy units coming out and everything like that and I think that kind of like maybe made them fade into a little bit of obscurity uh, but they're actually still a very good unit their friend okay their leader skill also probably bond of friendship was like an okay uh, link it was basically just an excuse to stick Kale and Khalifa on another team basically because everyone essentially wanted them on siblings bond uh, although they're not siblings uh, but everyone wanted them on siblings bonds uh, and so they made bond of friendship which was like supposed to be a way to have units like krillin and goku and you know kale and khalifa all on the same team which yeah, is fine but i just think it's yeah it the leader school was eh it was whatever so actually a decent category it's just i think you know no one really enjoyed it that much um yeah overall gotta be honest um i think the units were pretty good i i i like them don't have them would like them uh they're pretty cool like i i actually think they're really really cool and i think they're a lot of fun to use like for me um at the times i have used them they've looked really good uh, i have a, a penchant for Universe 6, I think Universe 6 is really cool uh, as a category and I just really like the characters from there. I like the team, I like the way they function. They're also pretty nutty like when you stick them all together. Um, so yeah, I, I really I really enjoyed um, kind of using those units and using you know, that whole thing. So I think for me, um, I really really hope to still get them. Uh, I think it would be a lot of fun, uh, but I think I can see why maybe they faded out a little bit 
uh, compared to some of the other units, you know, over time. But I think, yeah, they're still really, really cool. And that brings us to the end of Dokken Rush. Uh, so, well, it was pretty chilled. Obviously a bit of a weirder video. I didn't really like give you a guide on how to beat the event. Generally speaking, if you have a team that comfortably handles Dokkan events, bring a couple sensor beans in and chances are you're going to be able to complete it very, very easily. And you should complete it because there's you know a great amount of stones, there's a ton of stone rewards and realistically there's no reason not to. So if you are a new player, make sure that you have completed it guys. Uh, and yeah, but that's going to be it for me. As you can see, we collect our 35 stones, which um, were wasted on trying to get the legendary units. Uh, but hey, that is it for me. That's my luck. But thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video. So until then, take care and bye.